uh, August 23rd, 1989. So this is uh, not that long ago. A white mob in Bensonhurst, New York, murders black teenager Yusuf Hawkins for visiting a white girl. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, no, uh, no word yet um, on Lucas' status for the game. He's uh, warming up and seeing how it feels. So hopefully we'll know in the next 30 or 40 minutes. We'll start in the room, Renee, with uh, Brad. You look back at the uh, tape from last game. Uh, your doc just said the Clippers did their best defensive job. Uh, what did you see that you guys needed to do better to get uh, better shots? Well, we we were very good in the second half. Um, the first half, we we struggled because we didn't move the ball well enough. We didn't create enough um, scramble situations for their defense, and we didn't play with enough pace. Now, part of this is, you know, it's hard to play with pace when you're giving up 45 points in the second quarter. So, um, you know, we're, we've looked at some ways to uh, defend these guys better, hopefully get more aggressive in some in some situations. Uh, but they're a great team. They, they've got, you know, they've got great players. They, they you know, they, they put you in a lot of tough positions. Uh, Mark in the room. Correct. It's been a tough eight months for everyone here in the NBA with Kobe's passing, but with it would have been his birthday today. I was wondering. Who's that? Kobe. It would have been oh, his goodness. Birthday. Yeah, it would have been his birthday. But I was wondering today or just recently, have there been any particular memories that have stuck with you? <laughs> oh, there's so many. Um, there's so many memories. I mean, the, the emotions of uh, of when that happened and, and talking about all the all the recollections, memories, recent interactions that I had with him, that he had had with certain guys in our team, including Luca. Um, it just, it, 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 it stokes so many different emotions. Um, but, you know, I just, the, the number one thing for me was how he pushed the game and pushed the people that he competed with to a higher level all the time, and if you didn't, if you didn't meet or exceed that level, I mean, he was going to beat you. And uh, that, that, that to me was was probably the, the greatest part of his legacy. But there are so many other things, you know, so many other things, and you know the uh, the images of of him and and, and Gigi and, and and their special relationship and the relationship he had with his girls and his family and, and all that. Or tragic things to remember. You try to, you want to try to frame, frame the positive things and, and all the good things that was going, on, that were going on in his life before this tragedy. Okay, Rick. We'll move over to Zoom with Saad. Hey, Rick. Uh, just curious, uh, what what kind of differences are there? I guess you know, tactically or whatever, it, in coaching a playoff series versus uh, a stretch of games in the regular season. Well, you're, you're playing one team um, every game, and so you know the, there there are things that are going on on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. The teams are both teams are constantly adjusting. Um, you've got to be ready to counter things that they're doing. Um, they're going to counter things that you're doing, and you know. But at, at the beginning and end of it, it you know, it, it, it's it's mostly about you know, the, the level of force that you're playing with, the level of togetherness. Um, and, you know, uh, and the fact that in the playoffs, it's just got to be a completely selfless effort on the part of everybody on the floor to, to make things happen on a possession to possession basis. I mean, it's, it's hard getting stops when you got guys like Leonard and George out there at the same time. Um, it's hard to score. There's, they're, two, they're also two of the best defenders in the game. And so you, you, you constantly got to do little things, um, you know, to, to create the best possible opportunities to both stop and score on these guys. And uh, playoffs are hard, you know, and, uh, and hard, hard things are hard. But it's, a great, it's always a great opportunity. Next up is Manolo. Yes, Coach. Wanted to know a little bit more on tonight's rotation. 
even though if Luca's not going to be at the game, um, will we be able to be see a little bit more of JJ Barrera having his experience with playoffs? It's possible, very possible. He's got to stay ready. Um, you keep asking me the same question before every game. I give you give you the same answer. You know, man, um, he's got to he's got to stay ready, and and he will be. He always is. Okay, last one is going to be Christo Saltas. Hello, coach. I would like to ask you uh, how different will going to be your approach to the game uh, three if look if to the game four if Luca will be going to be out. If he's going to be out, if uh, he will not be available for tonight. Yeah, if he's not if he's not available, you know, obviously we have to have someone else start in his place. I'm not going to talk about lineups at this time, but. Uh, and look, it's it's every straight across the board. It's next man up, you know, and everybody's got to be ready. Um, you know, it's uh, playoffs are, are are a challenging enough task, uh, but you know, to be without a franchise caliber player is, is difficult. But but if that's the way it goes, you know, we'll have to be ready, and we'll have to do you know some of the good things we did in the fourth quarter of uh, of game three to you know to start the game today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me after. Good luck.